Okay. Filthy weather's here again, and that's the cost. Brakes are jamming up, so it's toothbrush, soapy water, time to clean them out. Welcome back. Okay, so I've done this video a few times before. I'm sure you've seen it, did it on the Bandit a couple of times and on the Hayabusa. But it is important, it's an annual thing you do every kind of autumn when the weather starts to get filthy dirty. You can see by the state of the front wheel on this. This is my daily ride, I ride this every day, it does about 20,000 miles a year, and it does get a lot of crap and dirt on it. And at the moment out there, there's no salt, it's just dust. So all that's in there now is just road dust. And before I get to the point where the salt starts to build up, I want to start with a level playing field. So this is where we take the caliper off, and I'll show you a special depth of cleaning that we're going to do. It's nothing to do with stripping, this isn't to do with seals, this isn't to do with refurbishing brakes, this is just housekeeping, simple as that. And it's not something you need to give to a mechanic, it truly isn't, you can do it yourself as you're about to see. But it's very important to do because if you don't, your, bikes, your, your brakes start to bind and that can be extremely dangerous when you start going around wet greasy corners and when the, when the real winter comes, snow and ice and salt, it's just a no-brainer, isn't it? You need that front wheel absolutely free running on its own. It doesn't want to bind at all. It's extremely important. So just notice some anatomy very quick. If you've got a Triumph Tiger, you'll know what this is. You don't have the floating caliper, uh, the floating disc and then the solid caliper. On the Tiger, you have a solid disc and a floating caliper. It's just a little bit back to front. It's, it's the same eventual end. It works the same way. These are a two-piston caliper, not four. You only have those two pistons there. There's nothing on the inside. And quite simply, it's a very simple, straightforward system. There's only two pistons to clean. So I'm going to pull that off, get the pads out and give it clean. First job before we take the caliper off, while it's nicely mounted in the bike, there's two things to do. There's a little, can you close in on that? Yeah, pen? I can see. There's a little screw down here. This is a grub screw. This through here, through there goes the pin that holds the pads into the caliper. So before we take it all off and then wonder how to do it and then you're trying to do it with holding the caliper in one hand and the screwdriver in the other, do it while it's bolted to the bike. Use the fork leg as a vice to hold all this still. So a nice, big, sharp, good condition screwdriver into that. Now all that is, is a set screw. It's a little tiny grub screw. Tap it into place and with holding on the back, hold the pressure in and give it a crack. Crack that off and take it out. It's just a grub screw, nothing more. There it is. Now you'll see in the centre of it, there's a little dent in the centre, like a little hole. And all that's for, if that gets jammed in completely, you can put a drill bit in there and drill that out. Quite simple. Uh, I've never had to drill one out because they always come out okay and I'll show you the best way to prevent them from jamming in. It's a simple bit of copper slip dolly dart. So keep that safe, we'll need that back in a minute. All right, next one, you've got to get the brake pin itself. Inside there, there's a five millimeter Allen head or an Allen bolt. So just get it firmly in there. Again, give it a little tap. Make sure that's firmly in place. And then just break the thread. All right, you don't need to do anything else. You're not going to take it out yet. But once that's broken, then we can actually take the caliper off. So we've used the fact that it's bolted to the bike as a good way of holding it all still. And then release the caliper from the front leg itself. Now you've got, there's no threadage whatsoever on the fork leg. That's just a clearance hole there. The thread is on this bracket. I'm going to show you in a sec. Take that out, just leave that pin in place for a second. And up here, this has just got a little star drive, rather cleverly they've put star drives in. Make sure it's the right size head. And just take that out because it's got a P-clip there that holds the brake hose in place and we need to move this around in our hand and you can't do it if it's held there. You just whip that out as well. Again, keep it nice and safe. We'll put that back in at the end. That's okay as it is. Right, now the caliper itself, once you've taken the bolt out, you need to give the caliper a little rotate, just twist it, twist it that way, so kind of that way and that way, give it a twist both ways, and what that will do is it will push the pads back using the disc, just gently, don't have to lean on it monkey boy, and it will push them back enough so it slips off, and there we are, now we've released, or well, I've released that pin at the back, so remove that pin itself and I want to show you this because we're going to refurbish this pin. Don't need that. <laughs> See, it removes itself when it's not done. Actually I could have done with it a couple more turns. Right. Now this pin itself, it threads in, it's got a threaded head as it were. 
and then press the pads down, give them a push down that way because they're on a spring and you can take that out and that is in a right minging state. Now that pin, as you can see, as the pads move in and out, they slide along that pin and someone's greased that pin. I don't believe it's correct and proper to grease those pins because the dust from the brake pads collects in the grease and forms a stodgy, porridgey, waxy mixture and that actually impedes the movement of the pads. It should be dry. Clean, rust free and corrosion free, so maybe it needs whipping out every few months and cleaning and I'll show you a really cool way to clean it in just a moment. Put that down there. Now these are only held in, can you see that pen nice and close? Mm -hmm. They're only held in at the back. At the front they just latch under a little edge. So you just lift them up and they slip out in your hand like that. Put that on that side. Just, they're not handed, but you'll see in a minute, they don't go the other way around. And that's the two pads. A little bit dirty, but not too bad. There's plenty of life in them. And there we see, look at that. State of that. Khaki and mess. See it? Mm. Now there's a little spring there. Just lift that spring up and pull it out. And while you've got it in your hand, correctly orientated to the way it goes, I and mean, if you drop that on the floor, ooh, which way does it go? All you do is simply pop it back in again where it went. Lift it out. Put it back in, practice with it, and that way, oh yeah, you'll, oh yeah, got it, yeah, yeah, that's how it goes in. Get that lodged in your head, or if you're really young, <laughs> if you're a teenager, take a photo of it on your iPhone. But I can't work on iPhone, so I just practice it a few times. So just lift that out, and we'll clean that as well in a second. Now that's ready to go, so I'm going to reach up, grab the old brake hand, uh, brake lever, and just pump those out. You see them both coming out. There we go. And they'll both come out, Ooh, hold that one in a bit, one will usually come out more than the other, there it comes, and you pump them out so that, right can you see that pen? Yep. You get a clean shiny bit of piston showing and that I refer to as the gum line, that's where the dirt stops and the shiny bit begins. Now as this dirt builds up in bad weather and it gets worse and worse and worse, it prevents those pistons from retracting back into the caliper and allowing the pads to retract away from the disc which is what causes the bindage. It's as simple as that so therefore it follows quite obviously we just have to clean that off. And the easiest way in the world, bucket of soapy water. <laughs> Good old bucket of soapy. Now yes I've used washing up liquid and I know that everybody always loves to tell me how it contains salt but so does the road and we're going to clean it off a brake cleaner anyway. But you'll see quite quickly, just an old toothbrush. Not your wife's. Not your wife's. Oh, I think I'm bored of using <laughs> that joke. <laughs> it's older than your grandma. Right. And you'll see quite quickly, all this black filth starts to run off. Just absolutely black. And that's brake dust, road filth and crap. So I'm going to give these a good old clean round as we always do. And this is the extent of the mechanical work we're going to do today. That's it. There's nothing more hard than this. Anyone can do this, it's just cleaning. Now when you've done it a little bit, use brake cleaner. Go and get yourself some brake and carburetor cleaner because that will eject all the water and all the crap and it will show them nice and shiny. Now if you look at them now and you see them to be all corroded and rusted, then you know that it's time to perhaps rebuild the caliper and take those pistons off the bike and actually polish them and put some new seals in. But these are absolutely fine. This is only a 25,000 mile bike and they are absolutely spotless. You can even, if you're lucky, sometimes you can get your finger in there with a cloth and you can rotate those pistons in their sockets and you can get the innermost part from in there out to the front to clean. These are a little bit tight because they're quite new. But there we are. I'm going to clean these up a little bit more so they're absolutely perfect. Enjoy me in a minute. Right, and that's just about done it. Good spray off. Clean the whole thing off. And all the time there's black crap coming off it, keep going. Right, now that, I'm just going to leave that there. Right, the next thing quick is the pads themselves. Get a little screwdriver, little tiny sharp bladed screwdriver, and this section in the middle here, 
clean it out like that, get all that crap out of it because it doesn't need to be there. It doesn't cause any real detriment, but it just doesn't need to be in there. Just scrape around the outside like that, get all the crap off it, and then with your toothbrush again, get it in the bucket, give it a good clean up each one, just so that you get all of that crap off. Because when it gets wet in the rain, all of that liquefies and will become sludge again. Because it's this is what you get, it dirt from the road that's in the rainwater dries um, on the pads as the heat from the brakes evaporates the water. And that dirt then stays there and works its way in behind those seals. And then it goes from being like this, where it just needs to clean, to being something that needs to be stripped or rebuilt, which, even if you do it yourself, it's a lot more money uh, in parts and grief and time. Right, they're all clean. Pads are good. I always get nagged at by someone on these videos, and I know someone's going to say that brake cleaner is probably bad for your hands, so wear some rubber gloves if you're bothered. Honestly, it's just housekeeping or not. But the most important one, as we said, was that pin that holds the, holds the pads in. So I'll show you a little trick on how to get that clean like you wouldn't believe. All right, drill, vice, bench, eye protection, normal rules of engagement. Now that thread on the back there is quite tough. That's a stainless steel pin, as straight as you can. Don't do it up too tight because you'll bite that thread. Spin it up. Perfect, that's good. Now I've got the clean end on it. I can put that in the vise properly, nice and tight, give it real clean. That is just about the best way on earth. Which way does it undo, Pen? <laughs> it's my drill and I don't know. There we are. Now that's the best way on earth to clean a brake pin, all right? And it is absolutely rounded. If you're gonna rub it that way with sandpaper, that's fine, but what you'll find is you'll get flats and scratches in it like that and it will start, it won't be surround. So that's a perfect way to do it. And that's polished and shiny. There we go, stick it back in the bike. <laughs> You're gonna take your glasses off. <laughs> I was hoping they'd make me look intelligent. <laughs> I need all the help I can get. <laughs> right, have it. Okay, now when you get to that stage where just having a look at it, everything's clean. That line, there is no gum line anymore. It's all completely gone, they're nice and clean. Obviously need to retract them back into their seats um, nice and smoothly. Now what I've always done is a big old cloth on the back to stop the paintwork getting damaged. Now I've got a pair of these, these are absolutely stunning, they really are. Big old proto grips, nice and gently. Now it only needs the slightest of pressure to push them in. And it just pushes them back into their seats neatly and at the same time. Right the way back in, all the way home. So they're almost completely flush, okay? Now if you feel round, they won't have made, there's no bites on that or marks or anything because they're in good quality grips and they're not all jagged and that's all perfect on the back. Right, so pads. With the pads, there's always been, a lot of people have asked me how do I stop the brakes from squeaking. Well, here's the method. You take some copper slip or copper grease or copper ease or whatever you want to call it and you put a little bit on the back of each pad. Now, no more than you would butter on a biscuit, just a thin layer. And all this does, it acts like a, a soft gasket or a soft surface 
uh, between the pad itself and the caliper body or the piston faces and if, the, if you get any of that juddering, that high frequency vibration, this stuff absorbs that vibration and it stops them singing or squealing. So that's all you do. You don't want any build. I want to just make this very clear. If you put shed loads, this stuff doesn't melt. It's heat proof and all that. It will stay in one piece. But that is all you must do. No more than that. No more than just a thin smear on the back of each one. Okay, so they're ready. Prep this ready for the job. Remember how that goes in? It's got a little step there and it clips over it because you practiced it or you took a picture of it on your iPhone. That's how that goes in. And the first one, they go obviously they follow the direction of travel so that arch upwards the lip that lip at the end goes right up into the end there and then the first one you have to push that down that little thing there pushes against it and holds it in place and that's where the pin goes now like i said to you the pin goes in dry don't put a load of copper slip all over this because it will just get covered in dust turn it to porridge so you push the pad in like that in that motion and that will just catch it there under pressure. Second one, exactly the same. Litch it in that side, or latch it in, sorry. Press it down that way, and push the pin through. Now, once you get to this stage, that thread's starting to bite. So before we go any further, I'm gonna take a little bit of copper grease, just on the end of that. And that's purely to stop it seizing in place. Simple as that. And it's uh, preparation, investment in the future. With the Allen key go pin, there it is. Mm. And that will just wind in quite nicely and it will smear out any extra copper grease that it doesn't need inside the thread where you just wipe it off. Now there is a torque setting for this. If you want to torque this in with a torque wrench, it's 14.7 foot pounds. Um, I'm not going to, I'm just going to do it up wipe off the excess uh, because 14 is pretty much wrist tight there you go that's about it um, doesn't need to be any tighter than that because it's not going to come out because it's got the little cap which is there now this little cap what I use with this you don't have to use a different product I'll put that lid on before I tread on the tube <laughs> and there's a nice copper stripe across the floor on that a few times right I use this stuff um, everybody, whenever I use this, asks me, what is it, where do I get it? So just take a quick screenshot, Loctite CSA Anti-Seize Copper. Oh, it's gone blurry. That's it. That's it. Anti-Seize Copper. All right. CSA yep. Anti-Seize. You can buy it from any of the good car accessory shops. I think Halfords and stuff, the likes of that sell it. Now, well, this is a wax, effectively. It's much harder, like a, like a solid stick. Of like a glue grease. stick. Like a glue mm -hmm. stick, exactly. Those well, the opposite of a glue stick, effectively, well, isn't it? Yeah. It's a slip stick. <laughs> Right, so just a little bit of that. And the reason I like using this is because being waxy, it's, it's kind of almost dried out in its own right. Um, and I like that because it kind of sticks a little bit rather than all just oozing out. Let's pop that on. I don't think there's any benefit in it to be honest, but I've got it so you've got it. Literally, I just nip it up and there it is. Don't do it anymore because it is quite a solid little thing. Okay, that's it. Shell will rebuilt. Before we put it back together, just check one other thing. This is the sliding part of the sliding caliper, that there. So provided that, that nips in and out like it does, nice and easily, without any effort whatsoever like that, that's absolutely fine. I have got a split boot there, which when I get the new pads, I'll buy that new boot as well and just pop a new one on, it's not a problem. Um, but these rubber um, boots, they've got a greased slot pin that goes inside and it just slides in and out, so as that, you clean them and grease them. That's quite obvious, and I don't think you need to be taught about that. So I'm just gonna pop this back. On there. I've always said, I must, admit, I must admit, I have said in the past, just do them up wrist tight. Uh, but it's important on brake calipers, I think, to do them up properly with a torque wrench. And if you don't own one, go and buy one. If you're going to do this kind of job and you haven't got the money or you can't invest or take the trouble to invest in a torque wrench, then you have to question your own priorities because you're going to end up paying the garage to do it and you'll pay them three times the cost of a torque wrench. It's a worthy investment. And the torque setting from is 29.4 foot pounds. I think that's 40, foot, uh, 40 newtons in metric. Um, 29.4. Do them up to the roughly both done up. 
and then go for the click. One. That's it, and leave it. Right? Don't then think, oh, a bit tighter is always better. And then bugger them up. And then you can put a little bit of marker paint just on those, and you can keep an eye on Okay, so unwind the tool wrench. Get nagged about that as well. You lot see everything. You really do. Right, okay. Um, now, really important this point to pump the brakes out. Make sure that when you reach up to the lever before you go for a test ride and pump the brakes out so those pads come back out to the correct operating distance. You've pushed them back out of the way. There's a good three or four mil gap so you could slot them back on. It's important to pump them out to their sort of 25, 50 thou distance so that they work. You don't measure that, just pump them out till they lock, then take for a test ride. So, looking at that, that's a little bit better than it was. Now, there's a little bit of, you can hear them because that copper slip that I've put on the back is just holding them a little bit. It makes them a bit squishy until it finds its own area. Now what that will happen is, what I mean is, you put that copper slip on the back of the pads and between the uh, face of the piston and the back of the pad where that ring touches, there'll be grease there at the minute. So a few actuations under anger, you know, in anger, then effectively that's... <laughs> the camera's wobbling because she... what's your problem? Did I say greasy ring or something? What's the matter? What? Well, you're saying it's like you've got two indicators going on. the bolts in my neck. I told you. I'm a... You mean I've got bolts to get out of my neck? Do you like the bolts in my neck? Right. Be serious, woman. I'm going to, I'm going to put this... I thought it was because I said greasy ring. No. Where the ring... Where... Be serious. <sighs> right. So where, um, where, the, where that copper slip touches on the back of the pad. Stupid. Obviously, uh, it takes a couple of minutes for that, or a couple of actuations under anger for that to settle in. So, effectively, take it for a test ride, bring it back and check it. But you want that kind of free running, minimum. If it's any less than that, then get it sorted, all right? It does, <laughs> camera's jiggling about because he's still got so it. so sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. We're going nice. to <laughs> we'll let her compose herself. We'll be back in a minute. Right, there we go. Marker paint in place. Okay, now that was... Triumph Tiger, break, winter, clean. Now, do that at the beginning of the winter and then just rinse them out every few days as you go through the winter. This kind of bike gets ridden every day in the winter. All adventure bikes do. There are four models of Triumph Tiger now on the road and I do believe that they're very, very popular for riding all year round. So I there we are. Thanks for watching this. This has been hopefully useful to you in some way. Take it easy, ride safe, and we will see you next time.